Now, you might say, despite that, that the fact that stereotyped portrayals of beauty are put forward to us by powerful media organizations every day intensifies our focus on those attributes, and that might be true. But that's not the same argument as trying to make the case that, you know, that that's a construction and nothing else. And As it pertains to beauty standards, do you think that progressive social pressure can overcome what appears to be our ingrained attraction to, for example, physical markers for biological health? Okay, so this questioner is influenced by, hypothetically, by literature indicating that we value such things as um, physical markers of fecundity, which is uh, fertility. And that's associated with health. Well, of course we'd value that because obviously, assuming that you give some credence to evolutionary theory, a species that didn't find markers for reproductive success attractive wouldn't last very long. So it's in some sense self-evident. Well, what are some of those markers? Symmetry in face and body, in gait. Uh, more symmetrical people are more attractive. They're, and they are healthier because illnesses of various sort during the develop, development produce asymmetries. And so, and that preference for symmetry is marked in many species. Uh, even butterflies, for example, are vastly more attracted towards perfectly symmetrical mates. Uh, physical strength uh, in men particularly, so shoulder width, shoulder to width ratio in men is another marker. Um, height, voice depth. Uh, there's some markers associated with testosterone, like jaw width uh, in men. Um, in women, like for men, women, men find younger women more attractive, all things considered. That's younger women who've reached puberty, obviously, in the vast majority of cases, and in the vast in the in the reasonable case, let's say. Um, now, and I, I think that attempts to push back too hard against that kind of proclivity are ill-advised, all things considered. But you know, I would modify that to some degree because one of the things that we have decided in the last few generations, let's say, is that people should be older than mere post-pubescence before their reasonable targets of sexual seduction. Now, if you go back 100 years ago or farther than that, it wasn't particularly uncommon for girls who are very young by today's standards to be engaged or married or involved in the kind of relationship that might lead to those two states, 14, 13, 15. Um, now, girls of that age frequently date in our society, but we've decided that sexual activity, especially if there's an age gap of any substantive degree, uh, well, can is, is statutory rape. So, progressive social pressure, so to speak, has produced, it might not be precisely a decrement in the perceived attractiveness, but it's definitely produced a change in behavior and expectation. And so, you know, we have biological proclivities, but we're also an extraordinarily malleable species. And you can see too that different cultures specialize in different markers of beauty. And some of those specialized markers of beauty don't translate well from one culture to another. So there's a central human tendency associated with perceived attractiveness, but any of the dimensions a variability that compose that central tendency can be altered substantially by social pressure.
pressure and social expectation. So it's complicated, like any issue of nature and nurture. Um, my basic sense is, is that you leave people the hell alone with regard to what they find attractive. And, you know, we hear stories that there's a corporate construction of beauty that's fed to us. And I think that's fundamentally rubbish in some sense, because corporations who use sex to sell are much more likely to succeed if they merely provide um, gratification for the instincts that are already there rather than trying to create them out of nothing for their own purposes. Now, you might say, despite that, that the fact that stereotyped portrayals of beauty are put forward to us by powerful media organizations every day intensifies our focus on those attributes, and that might be true, but that's not the same argument as trying to make the case that, you know, that that's a construction and nothing else. And I think the evidence for that is weak to the point of non-existence, despite the variability that I described. So yes, I think that progressive social pressure can overcome certain ingrained attractions, um, and we've deemed that necessary in many cases. I mean, it's also the case, at least we've, we've stopped action on those attractions to a great degree. And the same thing happens when you get involved in a monogamous relationship and decide, decide to forsake all others. You might, again, argue that, well, the attraction to others isn't ameliorated, but I would say it is to some degree, partly because people who are in a committed relationship just don't allow themselves to go there, right? So they might note attraction, but they don't dwell on it and they don't pursue it. And, and so that is some amelioration of the attraction by social pressure, not necessarily progressive.